My dear friend, I trust this letter finds you well. I need your help. There's something I need to take responsibility for, but I don't have the perspective to make the right decision. Now that the snow is melting, I want to have a discussion. Meet me at the House of Troubles on the first of sun's dawn and ask Griffy for the Crusaders' quarters. I hope to see you there. Try not to be followed. Kinoa. I think everyone's here. Thank you all for coming. Ish. When I got that letter, I thought you meant, well, me. Possibly the Council of the Companions, not this. Are we going to have problems, Harbinger? Down, Arden. No, well, maybe. This could get a little ugly, but I hope to keep things as civil as possible. The reason I sent for all of you, Zaytest included, is... Well, you all have vastly different perspectives on life in Tamriel, and I don't think I could make this decision alone. I want to hear what all of you think. And what decision would that be? Well, the Empire. The Stormcloaks. The War. Kinero, I know what you must be thinking, but it's not your fault, but it is my fault, and I refuse to stand by anymore. I'm the one who brought Talias and Ulfric up to High Hrothgar. I'm the one who made sure Markarth and Riften switched sides. I'm the one responsible for the fact that this war isn't over and tensions have only risen. I'm the one who's been sitting up on a mountain meditating on who I'm supposed to be all winter when I could have marched over and either shouted Ulfric down or told Tullius not to bother coming back in the spring. That's the only thing Delphine was ever right about, that I've been afraid of action. So I'm acting now. I've sat up in that keep long enough and it's about time I did something about this. It's about time we do something. No offense, but what can we do? We're what, six people? Against all of Skyrim? One person with a well-placed arrow can topple an empire. Well, yes, but what can we do about any of this? Ugh, nothing with that attitude. Whatever we put our minds to, really. If we can all work together in the same direction, that is. I got you and Arden to work together on this armor. I'm hoping a good, long, uncomfortable chat about politics will either teach me to temper my expectations or help you find common ground. One of the two. Well, I don't know about any of you, but I actually want to do something. I'm willing to listen, even if it's not my fight. I know there's a bigger threat out there than either Ulfric or Talius. As long as we take a step in the right direction instead of sitting here twiddling our thumbs waiting for Elinwyn to gather an army. Interesting. Safe to say we all have a bone to pick with the thumb, or then. One problem at a time. Yeah, they're the big threat, but... We've got to get things here sorted out so they don't have anything more to exploit while they gather strength. While they recover, you mean. The Great War was only twenty-odd years back. Twenty-five, I think. They're just fighting to recover their numbers right now. Plenty of time for a whole generation of men to be born and grow to fighting age. The Myr that were born twenty-five years ago are still children. Another twenty-five years down the line and those children will just be of recruiting age. Five years after that... Well, then we start worrying. If I'm around 30 years from now, I'll worry about it then. You might surprise yourself. I certainly won't be. Gran? Alright, let's save the will gathering about the future for an occasion with significantly more brandy involved and get back to the point. Thalm or bad, war bad, we're doing something preferably together. What are we doing? What's the plan? The plan is to figure out which side to back. I am, whether I like it or not, one of the most powerful people in Tamriel right now. I feel like I have a responsibility to act in Tamriel's best interest, regardless of how I feel personally about either side. I trust all of you to have my back without me having to throw my voice and title around. 
I don't want to be like Tiber Septum or Wolfharth or anyone. I don't want to walk into a place and demand to be put in charge just because I can shout the loudest. But I also don't want to pretend to be a normal person anymore. We have just enough power between the six of us to tip the scale one way or another. I feel like we should use it. Aye, I agree. The sooner this is over, the better, as far as I'm concerned. And you're right. I should have... I should have just picked a side back when I had the opportunity, but here we are a season later, and I want to talk it out. Have a council, I guess. Even if none of you end up following me, I realize you all have things to do, but... Not me. I came here to find Migran and take the fight to the Thalmor. I've already done one of those things, and the other requires a few steps first. I'm hoping this will be one of them. In that case, for me the answer is simple, though admittedly I do have a rather strong bias. But if the goal overall is to stop the Thalmor, or at least hold them off, siding with the Empire is our best chance. They have a larger, better trained, well-disciplined military, they have better organization on a political level, they have more resources between all the provinces, which isn't without its own problems, but that's not what we're talking about. The Legion's men are trained to a higher standard than the Stormcloaks. Granted, Nords tend to be some of the best warriors in Tamriel, barring the Red Guards, Argonians, and historically anyway the Dunmer, but I don't think sheer strength alone beats better training. Or numbers. Fair points, but most of the people running your empire right now are Thalmor puppets. The Jarls all got paid Thalmor gold when they signed the Concordat. I'm sure there are more people in the Heartland loyal to the Thalmor based on that gold alone. How many people are surfing the Empire right now because they have no other way to make a living? People in Skyrim are fighting to protect their home. If we help the Imperials, Skyrim will be no better than it was when this war started. Sure, the Empire might offer protection, but Skyrim can protect herself. All else aside, it takes men to hold a field, Harbinger. The Stormcloaks don't have the numbers. We're in our home country, Imperial. We don't need numbers. No, but you do need the coin. Pardoning Khajiit for being money-minded, but the Empire offers trade, supplies, resources, all things a province would need to fend off a Thalmor invasion, assuming they were to launch one. Where would Skyrim get those things if not the Empire? Surely the Khajiit caravans would no longer be welcome if Ulfric took the throne. Perhaps Hammerfell will ally themselves, given that the Dragonborn over here is a red card, but what about High Rock, hmm? What about Morrowind? This one does not think the Great Houses would be much inclined to help if we were to support the man who makes Dunmer live in a slum and Argonians sleep on the docks. Actually, they probably not find fault with how he treats Argonians. Just saying. Alright, fair about the trade, but Ulfric isn't the problem in that city. Oh? Then who's the one turning a blind eye to the suffering of his people? A few hard-hearted idiots spouting insults doesn't reflect the greater picture. There's a war going on. Ulfric has been too busy trying to keep his boys and girls alive without threatening Balgriff on accident. By accident. Whatever. And is there anyone in that city who would help the Dunmer? Or the Argonians? Yes, there are. I've met some of them, worked for one of them. There are good people in Windhelm, the foul ones just happen to be louder. I agree. You what? I think Ulfric isn't the one to blame for the state of that city. I think he's a symptom of a greater illness, so to speak. The natural reaction of a city and people pushed to the brink. They're scared, they're angry, they're afraid of losing their livelihoods. I'm not saying they're taking out their frustrations in a productive or helpful way, but that's what's going on. Angry, desperate people do angry, desperate things. Ulfric is trying to, among other things, make sure none of his people end up in some Thalmor Inquisitor's rack just because of who they want to worship. And he knows they won't stop at that. Those fuckers will use any excuse to bend the law to their will. True. It's happening in Cyrodiil already. When I first got to Bruma, there were a pair of adjutants harassing a priest for tending a temple of Martin Sepim. Said they wanted to amend the Concordate, if I remember correctly. That's... scary. And frustrating. Isn't it just? And that's my point. Everyone sees what's going on, and they're afraid. The Concordat put all the Jarls in such a bind they can't do anything to stop it on their own. Ulfric is, well, inevitable. He and Kinoa are the only ones with the voice willing to make a stand like this. It's why the Nords have been even louder about Talos than usual. They're scared. He gives them hope. Yes, the Empire was actually quite lax on the whole Talos worship thing until Ulfric stood up and used it as an excuse to start a rebellion. He didn't need an excuse, and he didn't start this over Talos. Have you been listening to your man there? 
He saw that Skyrim was ailing and had a ruler too soft to handle it. He challenged the late High King and won his duel fair and square. Torig was younger than I am now, how is that fair? You tell me, here we are discussing the fate of Skyrim with a girl young enough to be my granddaughter at the head of the table and- Alright. What's past has passed. The late King Torig has definitely passed. The White Gold Concordat got signed by an emperor who's now dead, speaking of past, so nobody living is really at fault here except for Ulfric, who, as Yarnvita and In Cayman have pointed out, is doing what he thinks is right for Skyrim, or at least Windhelm. Talius is doing what he thinks is right for the Empire, who are probably mostly loyal to the Thalmor now. Alright, even if they were, the Thalmor can't just ride herd over people outside of the Old Mary Dominion. They aren't that powerful outside of their own territories. Not on a political level, no, but individually, well... Inquisitors are good at their jobs. One person can't be controlled as easily as a political entity. If an Inquisitor is after you, they won't stop until you're dead or they are, and no amount of law will stand in their way. If they get caught, they're very good at making it look like you've done something illegal. Well, that's true, but they held a soldier hostage under Imperial orders. As long as we let the Empire rule Skyrim, that isn't going to stop. Who gave that order? What? Who gave that order? The Empire can no more control the Thalmor than I can command you, and vice versa. The best the Elves can do is ask for permission, though granted they are very good at getting people to do what they want without revealing their true intentions. The Battle of the Red Ring ended in a stalemate, and the only reason the Emperor agreed to the White Gold Concordat in the first place was because he knew he could put a stop to the fighting right then and there while he had the upper hand. The Almeri Dominion had to accept. You heard it, Cayman. Loss of life for Altmer is much harder to come back from than it is for us. That Concordat didn't give them permission to operate in Imperial territories, just stopped the fighting. Obviously they've turned that to their advantage, but at the time nobody really saw that coming. Alright, if he had the upper hand, why did the Emperor accept those terms? Why agree to ban Talos worship and hand over parts of Hammerfell? You know a lot about this for a skull. Uh, Hela was keeping score. Political drama in Cyrodiil. Much fun. Welcome distraction. <laughs> that sounds like Mummel, right? Well, one of the terms, which you pointed out, was that the Dominion had to pay reparations. The Emperor asked for that because he knew the Dominion wouldn't have started a war in the first place if they couldn't afford it. Obviously, they paid in full. The other terms were fair trade to help the ceasefire hold, which it did until Ulfric got pissy and started a rebellion. Hammerfell never agreed to those terms. The way my parents tell it, we seceded from the Empire because Titus made the second betrayed us. Having learned the context, I think he probably expected it. He discharged a bunch of men stationed in Hammerfell just before the Battle of the Red Ring so they could keep fighting for their homeland. I don't know how many for sure, this was all before my time. Now I'm thinking he didn't abandon Hammerfell, he might have helped save it. Those soldiers he left behind are what let us beat back the Thalmor as thoroughly as we did. So why didn't they finish the job? If they had the strength, they could have... The Empire couldn't afford the loss of life. The Thalmor didn't know that when they agreed to the Concordat, I don't think. Besides, they, either the Empire or the Red Guards, would have had to fight them back to the borders of Valenwood and Anaquina. And then they would have had very grumpy Bosmer and Khajiit to deal with. I just mean the second was a very smart man. Smarter than he let on. Yes. He was. Which makes his handling of this whole rebellion a bit of a puzzle. How so? Z, I'm gonna hand that question off to you. I think you've been in or around the southern end of Cyrodiil more recently than I have. The last time I was there it was crawling with garrisons. And not much has changed. The Empire could crush Ulfric if they pulled a legion from the south. Trust me. The last time this one had to go through it, the border was just a sea of tents and red banners. And that was just the camps that you could see. This was four or five years ago now, and this one suspect things haven't changed much since. They have more than enough strength to kick Ulfric into the next era. That's what Tullius said too when I went to bring him to High Hrothgar. Then why don't they? What? Well, I mean, if they've got all this military power behind them, why not just spare another legion and put the Stormcloaks down once and for all? Why drain the resources? Why sacrifice the men? The official word is they can't take men away from the southern front, which is why General Tullius has been here recruiting and training soldiers locally. Oh. Margaret, you might be onto something. Keep talking. Uh, keep in mind, I know next to nothing about war and whatnot, but if they could do it, then what in the blazes is the Empire waiting for? 
If they could just send in a couple dozen soldiers and just end the damn thing already, why haven't they? You said the Emperor was a clever man. What do you think his plan for Skyrim was? Just leave it for Tullius to deal with like, Aye, Moira, Skyrim's no big deal. We'll just let the farm boys find it out and go back to normal when the dust settles. If he was half as smart as the Khajiit, I, sorry, I forgot your name, makes him out to be, I don't bloody think so. It's Zaytest. Zaytest. Got it. So you're saying need plan for this? I think I know where you're going with this, but walk me through it? They should have ended this already. The Empire should have mustered the men to shut down the rebellion as soon as Alfred challenged Torig. Even if they wanted to be cautious, they shouldn't have sent just one general and a handful of soldiers. When I was in Falskar, I saw what happens when a Jarl wants to protect his people. Jarl Agnar came down on the Unvalders with all his force as soon as he was able. Why wouldn't the Empire do the same? For that matter, why haven't the Thalmor done it? It's suspicious. Not suspicious, it's classic. Zurinarctus, the art of war magic. If you're weak, appear strong. If you're strong, appear weak. If you're far away, make the enemy think you're near. If you're near, make them think you're not. The Thalmor flaunt their strength. They're putting on a show. The Empire might be feigning weakness in order to draw them out by only making a token effort to stop this thing. To be fair, Cyrodiil is fighting a two-front battle right now. Skyrim's civil war probably isn't their highest priority, and losing a few men out here is more likely preferable to pulling men away from the southern front regardless. If they turn their backs on the Dominion for too long, they'll lose part of that chokehold on the south, regardless of the Thalmor's posturing. Still, wouldn't winning it quickly be the better way? That way the Empire has one less front to deal with and the Thalmor don't have even more opportunity to pull something like trying to sail around High Rock? You think they would? Nah, they'd have to have ports along the way to stop and resupply. All of the ports along the west coast are controlled by either Hammerfell or the Empire, and we all know how Hammerfell feels about the Thalmor. Which is probably why they wanted the south coast so bad to begin with. <sighs> okay, we're making a lot of assumptions here. We're assuming the late Emperor planned for all this, sent Talias on... What, a staged attempt to keep the Stormcloaks in line while secretly waiting for them to win? What then? If you were still alive, perhaps a peace treaty. Most of the Empire's silver, well, maybe not most, but a lot of the Empire's silver comes from Markarth and Carthwaste, and that could be a bargaining chip if nothing else. Agreed. He couldn't completely cut ties. If they lose Skyrim completely, the Empire loses their easiest access to High Rock by land. Wait, what? Really? Oh, you're right. He's right, there's a pass somewhere in the Reach that opens up into, I think, Evermore? I'm not as familiar with High Rock's geography, it's probably a lot easier to get there by boat, but if the taxes on Imperial Goods and Sentinel are anything to go by, uh, well, the less said about that, the better. I could see the road up from Pale Pass to the Reach being preferable, at least in peacetime. And it makes no sense that the Empire would plan to lose Skyrim unless they also plan to make peace with Ulfric afterward. Or unless they have a second source of silver, which I suppose could be. So we're at a stalemate, kind of, but with more information. Or at least, guesses. Not necessarily. If the Empire is planning to broker some kind of treaty with Skyrim... Oh! Oh? Oh, I've just... I, I should have made this connection sooner, but this all makes sense, kind of, sideways. Walk us through it, hon. Alright, this isn't the first time the Empire has purposefully lost territory right after they signed the Concordia. If Kinna was right, Titus Mead II did the same thing with Hammerfell, discharged troops knowing that the Red Guards would rebel against the terms of the Concordia. They didn't put up any kind of a fight when Hammerfell immediately rejected the terms. It was understandable, given the Thalmor still camped out in the south. This could all be an elaborate setup. That's what I've been saying. You... Well, yes, but I think there's more dimension to it. I think we were onto something earlier when we were talking about the Thalmor threatening to amend the Concordat and having the potential to reign herd over Imperial territories, legal or not. I think... maybe, and it's a big maybe... I think Titus Meath II was trying to save Skyrim, being as big a deal strategically as it seems to be, from having the terms of the Concordat warped against it. If the... Oh! If the Stormcloaks win, how long do you think that embassy in Hafengar will last? I give it till the mood if Elfric holds one. You know a lot about Nords for a wood elf. I loved a Nord once. But 
No embassy, no spies, no spies, no intelligence. No intelligence, the Thalmor are in the dark on Cyrodiil's northern front. Even if Skyrim and the Empire end up hating each other, the Nords aren't going to take any kind of Dominion presence lying down. That's an advantage for Cyrodiil. A very clever one. They have protectors on their northern, western, and eastern borders, regardless of disposition. So long as Ulfric doesn't turn into a conqueror after all this is settled. Clever! Fight like Boethia. Fight like Mephala. My Azora. Anyone else want to invoke Daedric Princess, or are we good? I'm good. Nope. Good. And if the Thalmor try to take High Rock, they've got Orsinium, Hammerfell, and Skyrim between them and Cyrodiil. A wall of warriors to say nothing of the mountains. And the Reachmen. And the Reachmen. So, really, the choice is arbitrary. On the one hand, Skyrim gains its freedom, the Nords are happy, we can still broker some kind of peace with Cyrodiil, and possibly Hammerfell if they for whatever reason decide I'm a good diplomat and not just another honorless outlaw. On the other hand, Skyrim retains the resources to rebuild, the Empire remains intact, we might be able to pull legalizing Talos worship out of the ashes with a concordant of our own to keep the Nords happy. There are still so many problems with both sides. And it would be a fool's errand trying to make everyone happy. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be a step forward. We can worry about the rest later. She's right. This is war, Ismir. People will die no matter what happens. I don't like the idea of playing chess with people's lives any more than you do, but... In this case, someone has to or nothing will change. For once, I agree with you, Imperial. <laughs> to be fair, you are most likely correct about the Legion being mostly in the Thalmor's pocket at this point, but there's another problem. The Legion would gladly accept help from everyone in this room, with a bit of disguising on my part, but... Would the Stormcloaks allow anyone but Jan Vida into their ranks? <laughs> I'm still not sure Galmar would let me in, frankly. Frail, senile old lady and all that. Maybe they don't have to. What? While it would be much easier to join the Legion, it would be much more restrictive, chain of command and whatnot. We'd have to move on their schedule. Likewise, it would be very difficult for most of us here to join the Stormcloaks. So? What if we don't? Then we need one or two people on the inside of whatever side and the rest of us work as Kodeshi. Shadows. A strike team. That's my girl. I don't think that would go over well with either side. The Imperials are too set in their command and the Stormcloaks are too proud. Well? Do you think Ulfric would let a cat join his army? What about Tullius? My people are as distrusted all over Tamriel as Morgoods are in Windhelm. Great gods, I'd not thought about that. Alright, this is a lot to consider. A lot of it is just guesswork and making connections that might not connect right now. I trust it, but I need to narrow things down a little. Morgood, ideally, how do you want to see this play out? Me? Why me? Because you're going to inherit this problem from the rest of us if and when we all kick off to Sovngarde, so to speak. You're also an optimist. I mean, I don't know if I have an ideal. I just want the Thalmor out of Skyrim, out of Tamriel. I guess I want, ideally, to see Valinwood and elsewhere join the tide and find a way to get out from under the Thalmor. Gods, I want the Somerset Isles to kick the Thalmor and put someone else in charge already. Someone less awful. Make the bastard scared to ever come back. I know what they do to people down in Valinwood. I want them to pay for that. Are you alright, dear? What do you know about Valinwood? I know they take kids against their will and stick them in training if they show promise. I know they can- How do you know about Valinwood? Oh. Uh, sorry, I didn't- Uh, I, I had a friend. Her name was Daryl. She didn't talk about it past much, but we met, well, here, actually, in the basement, hiding from the Thalmor. What? What were you doing here, of all places? When did this happen? It was a while ago, Gran. Mum was there too, but this was before she met Da. Long story short, Theral and I bonded over the shared hatred of the Thalmor. She told me what little bits she could about back home, and she and I kept up for a while until... Well, let's just say our line of communication got well and thoroughly cut just as we were making some headway. She has my sympathies. And my condolences. Aye, and you've got mine and hers based on the look on your face. Do you need to step outside? Not yet. I'll let you know if that changes. I like the way you think, Mordgood. There are a lot of people who'd like to see the fuckers wiped off the face of Nern. 
Honestly, I don't think that's likely to happen in my lifetime, but maybe yours. You can't kill an idea, but you can make it scared to ever rear its ugly head again. Ingra- Uh, Cayman. I, I kinda hate to put you on the spot after that, but... You have the best mind for strategy here. How do we get there from here? How do we break the Thalmor? I disagree, Ismir. Tactics, maybe, but Arden's the strategist. He plays the long game. I just chop skulls and scout places. <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm useless in politics. Dom can attest. Besides, you're a realist. You're more likely to take the middle road than the rest of us. And he's lived the longest. So, more perspective. More patterns. Something like that. Exactly. Alright, fine. I'm no prophet, but I think that if Skyrim withdraws from the Empire and kicks out the Thalmor the way Hammerfell did, it'll inspire Hyrock to do the same. They might even ask for aid from Skyrim and Hammerfell if they do. Maybe the Empire even has contingency plans for that, who knows. In that event, only one province is left, Cyrodiil, and it's got the main body of its military power in the Heartland. And for the Thalmor, launching an attack at that point would be impossible, Unless they went for High Rock or Hammerfell first, and we all know how that's likely to turn out. Yes, but there is a trap in there. If Ulfric wins, the Empire is weakened, even if by a small margin. The Thalmor would do well to attack at that opportunity. But they won't. No? The border is too well guarded from what you've told me. Attacking would be suicide. A Stormcloak victory would either bait out a futile attempt on the part of the Thalmor to maintain the image of their superiority, or it would expose them and their system. Because if they don't attack, it means they won't chance a battle with even a weakened, leaderless empire. They could always claim they're above such petty squabbles. <laughs> they could, but what would the people see? Their people. The people in Valenwood, the people in Pelotine and Anaquina. The people in the Somerset Isles who haven't had hope for a better future in decades. What would they see? My, what tangled webs we weave. I have my moments. And even if they were to succeed at taking High Rock instead, since it's separated from Cyrodiil, they'd still take on heavy losses by the time they got to Hammerfell and Skyrim. Even with Skyrim recovering, they'd be pretty easy pickings. Still, I wouldn't underestimate the Dominion's guile. It's what got them this far in the first place. And what if Ulfric doesn't win? What if we side with the Empire? Then we reinforce the idea that Empires, like Cyrodiil's and the Almeri Dominion, are a good idea and cannot fall. Right. Because if High Rock and Skyrim leave and expose the Dominion's illusion of power, Valenwood and elsewhere might be able to broker some kind of peace with Cyrodiil, or even Blackmarsh, and fight back. At the very least, they'd be reminded that there was a time before Dominion rule and they have power too. Whether or not the fear of change wins out remains to be seen, but by then they'll have plenty of examples of why they should act in spite of that fear. Just my two drakes, but I wouldn't account on Black Marsh for anything. <laughs> the Anzalil got what they wanted, and now they just want to be left alone. Either way, we'd then have a mostly united Tamriel once again. United in freedom rather than under an emperor this time. Sounds too good to be true to me. I doubt it would go that well unless cooler heads prevail. Some of us will probably be around to see it if it does. Hey, or we'll get to watch it go completely tits up instead. You've got spirit. I like you. Alright, that's the best case scenario, more or less. What's the worst? They'll more take over, all of the non-elven races are killed or enslaved? Pretty much. Really? Well, no. It would be all of the non-Aldmer races, specifically. Oh, god, it's like the aliens all over again. Like the worst of the aliens all over again. Why do you think they glorify them so much? It scares me a little how quickly and nonchalantly you answered that, but alright. Realistically, it'll probably be somewhere in the middle. High Rock might stay with the Empire and then their forces would be split, but Skyrim, or Hammerfell for that matter, could use that for diplomacy. If Valenwood and elsewhere don't reject Dominion rule outright, we still throw a spear through their illusion and that might lead them to making a mistake that it'd be hard for them to come back from. Exactly. And it's not as though the people of Skyrim rely much on the Empire for the basics. People here are pretty self-sufficient if you look around. Most of what we need right now, or will need to rebuild, is stone, metal, and wood. Some thatch, maybe. All of which we have in abundance. Food not so much, but there are a lot of hunters here. A lot of game, and Rorikstead is doing pretty well in spite of where they are. We've got plenty of coastline for horkers and fisheries. 
Hell, trade with Falskar might actually pick up again now. Hi. For the moment, we could ignore whatever Morrowind and Blackmarsh are doing in terms of help. Maybe we could get on House Redoran's good side and maybe fix whatever's going on in Soul Slime, but... I don't think we should expect help from that general direction. We'll build that bridge if and when we get to it, but I like the way you think. Alright. I think I'm on board. Except for one thing. How people treat Dunmer in Windhelm, whether or not it's actually Ulfric's doing. It isn't something we can ignore, and Zaytest is right to be worried about it. I've seen what that kind of hatred can do if left to fester, and I hesitate to back Ulfric because of it. Whether or not he intended it, by not doing anything about it, I'm afraid he might have started something far worse than a war. Simple fix. He gets out of line. I know a guy. Inger! Look, if we put him on the throne, we can take him back off it again. We've had plenty of examples of that in the last few years. If he wins, we open up dueling as a legitimate method of challenging the throne again, and you have the next best claim being Dragonborn. If I ever get that power hungry, please kill me. It would be my honor. Besides, just taking him out won't help in this case. If Ulfric dies, he becomes a martyr in the eyes of all the Nords who are using him to justify their actions. I'm afraid if Ulfric wins this war, their hatred will spread and then the Stormcloaks will be no better than the Thalmor. And that is exactly what this one is afraid of. Aye, and as much as I and all the Dunmer and Windhelm appreciate your concern, it really is just a couple of people, loud though they might be. Besides, you really think the Dunmer, who worship gods of cunning, murder, careful planning and patience, would seriously need help with a couple of loudmouthed, piss-drunk idiots of any flavor? Flavor. Not the word I'd have used, but I do get your point. It's surprisingly appropriate. Ew. <laughs> Still. I've seen what happens when the louder people end up swaying those around them. We can't let that happen. Like Heyman said, we know a guy. Besides, Rolf is harmless, but his words aren't. Not taking that seriously is what led to, for example, the infighting between the Forebears and Crowns back in Hammerfell. Or if you want a more extreme example, the Thalmor. How do you think they ended up back in power after being wiped out like, what, twice? A few seemingly harmless comments here and there that eventually started making sense to enough people. To say nothing of Heimsker giving full-on sermons wishing the death of all elves. I imagine it's obnoxious anyway, but when you are an elf, if I were anyone but myself, I'd fear for my safety. Yeah, he's a bit... much. My point exactly. Nobody would feel welcome with that kind of talk going around. Aye, and how's about we deal with that after we've got the rest of this mess figured out? Besides, if we win, we'll at least be able to convince people not to listen to them, even if they don't change. I'm scared is one thing, and that's... more complicated. But Rolf's whole argument hinges on the idea that the working class Dunmer don't fight, and it's because they're working. I want him to see me in Stormcloak armor if this is where we're going with this. Fair enough. So, we're going to have to side with Ulfric because to kill him would be to turn him into a martyr. Not necessarily. Or well. Yes, but if we do it right, we could frame the Thalmor for it, dress Red here up in a uniform and have him go in. Direct the Nord's aggression at the Thalmor specifically. If I ever have to put on a... No, not happening. Uh, well, it could still be worth around, but... Uh, ideas. Alright, well, you've heard all sides now. I think we've beaten this horse to death and halfway back again. Want to keep going, or should we let it rest in pieces? Ugh! Gran! And I thought the flavors thing was bad. <laughs> yeah, we should probably wrap this up before Inigo starts getting twitchy. Alright. Oh, you didn't bring him with you. This one was told not to be followed. Inigo is very followable. Hey, that makes sense. Are we doing the right thing here? No. We're gambling on possibly faulty information and putting our cards on either a deeply corrupt empire or a man who might end up being a malicious bigot. We're betting on the outcome of a war and playing chess with people's lives. No, we're not doing the right thing. But we are doing something, and we're doing it because no one else will, and if nothing changes, the Thalm will win by default. I... I guess I really am doom-driven. Beware, beware, the Dragonborn comes. Maybe it's your fate to break the cycle Tiber Septum started. You already broke the one Alduin was supposed to perpetuate. Uh, hun? That was a bit on the nose. More than you could know. 
It's a heavy burden to shoulder. Well, it's a good thing you're not shouldering it alone, eh? Hey, we've got your back. I hope so. I think I've made up my mind. Arden, you're on the short list of people I trust with my life. You all are, really. And I know hearing this will be hard for you in particular, but... I think I have to side with Ulfric. I, I can't make any of you come with me, I know that. I'm just one person. I shouldn't be making decisions that could affect an entire nation, but... Here I am. Yeah, I was kind of afraid of that. I'm still Kalovian at heart, but... If this is how it has to be, who am I to stand in your way? I don't expect it to be easy for me to fight the people I grew up admiring, but... I'll try. For your sake. And for the sake of Skyrim. Are you sure? I fought through the depths of Blackreach with you. Your heart is true enough even if your words may falter. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. You surprised me, Imperial. Honestly, I'm still not sure if Galmar will let any of us in, but I suppose the cat is right. If it's the will of the Council, I'll see it done. And Gren's not going anywhere without me. <laughs> Alright, in that case I think it's decided. We'll wait until first seed. Prepare. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and then... Well, I think me, Yarnvita, and more good will have to go have a chat with Ulfric. Why not now? The Legion's mostly still back in Cyrdil, I think. Because we bear not even Ulfric Stormcloak would want to try to field an army in Skyrim's winter. First seed will leave room for late season snowstorms, if it's anything like Solstheim here. Smart. And one more thing before we wrap this up. While we're all up here, anyway. What's that? My name, for those I still haven't told, is Igrath. Came in as an alias. I prefer you use that one when we're out and about, but now you know. And now the two of you can stop tripping over it. Heh, <laughs> figured. Sorry about that. Well, then, it's nice to meet you properly, Ingrath. I'll try to remember that. Nice to meet you, too. Alright, it was lovely, but I find myself in need of a long walk and a long think. Good night. Uh, uh, good night? You alright, hon? I feel like I'm betraying my father. No, I'm not alright. You don't have to. I'm not going to stand in the way of someone who could shout either one of us into a pile of ash at a moment's notice. No, but you could stand back and let the rest of us fight. I couldn't do that either, because then I'd feel like a complete coward, and I wouldn't want you to be out there without me. That's sweet, but I can take care of myself. We both can, but that doesn't mean we have to. I, I just found you. I don't want you dying fighting some stupid war for the Nords. Oh. This is hard for you. Extremely. Well, you don't have to carry your burdens alone any more than Kinawa does. I'm here for you. And I'm here for her and you. I'm a little surprised that you'd be backing the Stormcloaks being an elf and all, but... Is it true? What Mordgood said about Valenwood. That's... Uh, right, I'll... I won't go there. Uh, let's just go home. Unless you have other business. No. Let's go home. <laughs>